All right, we are back with another prize fix video. Going to be talking NBA in this one. We got four games tonight. Uh, so going to kind of talk over each of those games. And uh, we'll be talking about a whole bunch of picks, but we will ultimately give you a six pick slip that you can either, you know, tail if you want to do that um, or just, you know, mix and match your own um, with the picks I give you. But definitely going to talk about a bunch of different plays. I feel like there's a lot of value uh, specifically in one game, um, but on the board as well. And a uh, couple injuries that we can talk about for sure um, to try to take advantage of as well. But if you're new to this channel, definitely go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we're growing like crazy, already over 2,100 subs now. Uh, so quickly on the road to 3,000. Um, just a wild ride. Also, guys, you are super uh, helpful. Looks like the Discord should definitely be a go. Uh, so that's something I am working on. I will say I don't know too much about the platform itself, uh, but I will be learning about it uh, in you know due time and uh, definitely get that up and running for you guys. Um, but yeah, like the video, comment down below if you guys are going to tail. If you like these picks, if you don't like some of these picks, uh, let me know. But video picks from last time. Another 50% day. Uh, kind of annoying. We keep getting some tough breaks. Uh, like in the Milwaukee-Toronto game, we had a blowout. Not the way you might think. Toronto blew out Milwaukee. Brooke Lopez didn't get a whole bunch of time. I um, think he had six points in the first half, so that was frustrating. Um, so looking good and then ended up not getting there. Same thing with Michael Porter Jr., uh, another kind of blowout in the wrong direction. Denver uh, lost this one. Um, and MPJ, again, didn't get his, you know, full allotted minutes, um, which probably would have got there in terms of, you know, a normal game. And then Trey Young, with a minute left in the game, uh, gets his eighth free throw made. So that one looked good as well. So uh, the three that hit, he kind of no sweaters there. Um, Marketing, probably the closest line here for us. Osser Thompson was easy money. And then Pirtle continues to... Uh, be very valuable on this prize fix board. But let's jump into the games today and kind of uh, talk through some picks. We're going to start with this Philly um, and Toronto game. I feel like this is the game that has a whole bunch of value. And I think it's because we saw Embiid absolutely dominate this team just a few days ago. They have faced off against each other um, literally like two days ago or something. Toronto. So they played on the 28th, so four days ago. Um, and we saw Embiid, you know, eat. He had a crazy amount of rebounds. He had the blocks and assists. Um you know, obviously 34 points also, but typically against Toronto, he doesn't play, you know, all too well. So the two guys I'm going to be looking at specifically, maybe even three guys on this team, um, I'm going to be typing them in here, but these aren't going to be like the official picks, but definitely these are picks and I'm playing. I'll actually show you my entries in a bit, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Tobias Harris. Uh, Tobias Harris at this 14.5 points line. I really like that. He's hit that in all four of the games so far this year. And he was one of the guys that we saw take one of like the biggest boosts when Harden was out. Um, I don't know if I have it still pulled up. I do. So uh, last year when Harden was out, uh, Harris scored 3.5 about points uh, over his normal average when Harden was out. Maxi obviously getting the biggest boost there. And we can look at their usage as well. This is like a free tool online you can use. Um, but Tyrese Maxi and Tobias Harris definitely get the biggest amount of usage, as well as DeAnthony Melton, something we'll look at as well. Um, but Tobias Harris at 14.5, he's done it in all three of the games so far this year. Uh, he did it in a decent amount of his, you know, last year he did that pretty well. Um, but with no Harden, I know Ubre is coming into the starting lineup now, um, as, as he should as a scorer. Um, I'm actually going to go to the 16.5 points and assist line because of that Ubre uh, mention right there. Uh, he's a big catch and shoot guy and he can get hot in a hurry. Um, so I'm really liking the 16.5 spot for Tobias and then for Maxi, uh, just going to keep it simple for him. Points, rebounds, assists. He hasn't had less than 40 all year. And uh, this might be Tyrese Maxi, guys. He might be an all-star, um, you know, very, very fun player to watch, fast player to watch, uh, exciting player. Uh, and he does it all. And again, he did this. He got 47 points, rebounds, and assists in a game where Embiid had like 34 and 15. Um, and he, and uh, Embiid had some assists as well. So uh, definitely a good spot for Tyrese Maxey. This will continue to rise, I assume, up the uh, during the year. Um, but they haven't caught up just yet, so definitely take advantage of Maxey there at that spot. And then the last uh, sixer we'll talk about is DeAnthony Melton here. Kind of saw his usage rate go up in that page over here. Um, but, you know, points, rebounds, assists is something you'll look at. He's hit that in, uh, you know, these are two play, uh, preseason games, but two of the three games so far this year. Um, uh, definitely something I would look at for sure. Uh, but just for this this case, we'll do Tobias and Maxi. Um, next up, we're going to talk about we're in the same in the same game. We're going to look at Scotty Barnes here. Uh, he's been killing it as well, kind of like Maxi in the points, rebounds, and assists line. 
pretty sure he's hit that every single game. Yeah, he has a little bit closer than Maxi is. Um, but Scotty's been crazy. He's been doing really, really good this year. Uh, but his points line looks solid. Uh, his rebounds line looks really, really good. Um, against Philly, though, only had eight last last time. Um, and so someone definitely I would take for sure. I'd probably be looking at his points, rebounds, and assist line just because I think he can, uh, you know, stuff the stat sheet. Um, the only thing is Siakam didn't have a great scoring game in that game against uh, Philly just a few days ago, um, which is another reason maybe his rebounds line. Uh, but definitely something on Scotty is going to be valuable. Um, I'll go ahead and put in his points, rebound, assist line and throw it in there just to kind of show you guys. And then the next guy for um, Toronto we're going to be looking at is going to be Jakob Pertl again, someone we talked about a lot this year um, in our video picks, but 18.5 uh, rebounds, points, and assists. Something I'll show you on um, his outlier page real quick. Uh, if I can get it up, oh, i got to go to the right game. But uh, he started off the year slow, you know, had a few games where he had foul trouble, uh, fouled out of a game. But 2023 as a whole, he's gone over this points, rebounds, and assist line uh, in four of the five games. Or I guess that's rebounds and assists, so maybe look at that. But points, rebounds, and assists, three of five games. Um, again, he fouled out of one of these games, only playing 18 minutes. But... Another injury news, no potentially no precious Achuya. Let's see what they say. Doubtful for tonight. Um, so they're very thin at the center slash forward spot anyway. Um, so we could see a lot of Yaka Pirtle, um with no Achuya is is huge there. So uh, he's kind of their only really backup center other than Siakam, I guess, can slide into that spot for sure. Um, but should see a lot of Yaka Pirtle, and uh, this should be a good spot for him. So 18.5. Points, rebounds, and assists. You could look at his first half as well. Something he's gotten, I think, almost every game, uh, even the gun when, uh, even the one with foul trouble. He pay, plays like two more minutes in the first half than in the second half, or he has so far this year. But yeah, he's hit it in the past five games. This 9.5 points, rebounds, assists in the first half. So that's something I've also played for sure. Uh, and then to finish off this game, let's go to Dennis Schroeder um, until he, you know, proves me otherwise. He's been a facilitator on this team. We just saw them absolutely kill the uh, Milwaukee team, that new look Milwaukee team. Um, but let's look at his assist line. 7.0 just seems too low. Uh, got a rhyme. That was funny. Uh, October 25th was the beginning of the season for them. He's done it in all four, of the, all five of these games so far. Um, so he looks really good. He's someone that can score a bit too. Uh, 12.5 is his points line. Uh, so I'd probably be looking at his points, rebounds, assists again potentially maybe just his assist line let's just go with his assist line to show you here um but i've pretty much already submitted something exactly like this um so this is kind of a great you know game if you're going to be watching this game uh fun bet to go for for that uh for that slip but schroeder Pirtle, barnes maxi and harris i think you could mix and match uh different lines for them we talked about first half lines for Pirtle, um but definitely something to look look into for sure and then for the later games, there's just not a whole lot just yet because Zion and Brandon Ingram do not look like they're going to play. Um, Ingram actually is questionable, but Zion is ruled out. Uh, so I'm not seeing any Pelicans lines. Okay, looks like they just came back on the board, um, which is good to see. You could definitely attack, you know, CJ McCollum, uh, especially if Ingram doesn't play. Uh, let's see if Ingram's on the board. He is not, so but he's questionable, and he looks like he potentially could play. Um, so I'm just staying away from that game just until I know if Ingram's playing or not, because that's kind of a big boost uh, for some people and a big you know, detriment to others. Um, but for the later slate of games, I'm seeing some value in John Collins. Um, actually, first half here. The only reason I'm hesitant in this bet at all, it would be like a home run bet if he, if he didn't, um, if he wasn't up going up against Orlando. Uh, so this 11.5 points, rebounds, assist line, he's absolutely crushed um, in four of the last five games. These are all like regular season games. Uh, but he gets like 16 plus minutes in the first half. Uh, him and Laurie Markkinen get a lot of run in that first half. Um, so, you know, a rotation play maybe here. Uh, but something I really, really like is John Collins in the first half. Uh, only thing is Orlando doesn't give up a whole lot of points to, uh, to power forwards slash centers. Um, and also not a whole lot of rebounds. So that's the only negative negative part of that play. Uh, but something I'll definitely be be playing for tonight personally. Next up, we're going to be talking, I guess we'll stay in the same game here. We'll go to Markel Fultz. Um, I'm actually going to fade Markel here. Uh, let's go to, not first half, but let's just go to the full game here. Um, someone that hasn't really, I guess a few guys haven't really popped off just yet. 
I know Markel hasn't got a big score, um, but, you know, Pala, we haven't seen have an amazing game yet. Wendell Carter hasn't had a great game just yet. Um, but Markel has been under this points line in four of the five games. Again, he's not really a scorer, more of a facilitator. Um, definitely, you know, he's had a weird career so far, but um, liking him in this spot, maybe wouldn't touch his points, rebounds, and assists, but uh, an under on his points is something I definitely want to look at. Um, and then staying in the same game, do we have one more? Yeah, so it would be marketing. Um, again, the the we talked about the Orlando matchup here, uh, but really, really liking his first quarter play at five and a half. Um, marketing. Something I really like. I think he's hit it in like four of the five games so far. Uh, but we talked about him. I think he gets like 12. I think he almost goes the whole quarter, uh, that first quarter. So this is something I definitely look at. Five and a half, something I've played. But then also, just an entire for the entire of the game, if I can get him alone. Marketing, 9.0 rebounds. Looks really solid. Uh, again, the matchup is tough here. And then 23.5 points. Looks really solid. Um, so I'd probably be looking at his points rebounds line at 32.5. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the game script game. Uh, I guess it's two games. No, this is one game, but we got Collins, Fultz, uh, Collins, we're going first half on him just cause that, you know, added a boost for him in the first half. And then Laurie, you could look at first quarter, you could look at points, rebounds, um, as kind of a combo, but, uh, got a whole bunch of plays. Wasn't really thinking about doing this whole thing. Um, but looks like we're doing it that way. It looks like I'm going to give you guys a ton of plays, uh, and talking about all these games. Next up, we're going to go to um, the Spurs. Let's just go to Keldon Johnson here. Uh, I think that he's the guy that you're getting the most value on. Uh, the leading scorer on this team last year. Uh, so 21 or 22.5 points and rebounds is something I really, really like for Keldon Johnson. Um, you could also look at his 21.5 points and assists line. Um, I kind of like the combo here. He's definitely someone that could look at or he can, uh, you know, uh, influence the game in a multiple multitude of ways. His points, rebounds, and assist line at 26.5 uh, is something I'm very interested in as well. Again, he scored 27 points, I want to say, last game. Yeah, 27 points against Phoenix last game. Uh, the only thing is if Booker is playing in this game, um, he's questionable right now. Uh, not sure if he's It's not like leaning towards one way or the other just yet. Um, so I think there potentially some blowout potential if, if Phoenix, you know, kind of plays pissed off and uh, really gets it going and, and you know, because if you don't know, the, the Spurs won this game by one last game um, in a crazy fashion. That Durant got the ball stolen from him. And I think it was Keldon Johnson, actually, that went right to the rim and scored. Uh, but just a crazy ending. Maybe they play pissed off, if especially if Booker's back and they might blow him out. But Keldon Johnson's the guy I'm looking at for this team. Uh, not going to talk too much about Phoenix, just we don't know about Booker. Um, looks like we're not getting any lines anyway. Yeah, but uh, if no Booker, I would probably attack Eric Gordon like I typically do. And then Herb Jones is someone I was wanting to talk about. I'm not sure. if Yeah, his line was here um, a bit ago, but they took it off for a second. Looks like it's back up. But block shots. He's done this in a lot of these games. Let's just go to his page here at Herb Jones. Um, I'll just show you his blocks. He's done it not only like every game this year. Minus 130 odds is really good to see. That's, you know, one of the better odds you'll get on prize picks. But if you extend it to the past 10 games, I know some of this is last year, uh, but you can kind of see, okay, five games this year, five games last year, or four games this year, whatever, six games last year. Uh, he's done it on a multitude or a different levels of the game last year and this year, getting a decent amount of minutes last year. Um, obviously, this year, if we see no Ingram and no uh, Zion, he'll get a boost in minutes there. Uh, so I really like Herb Jones in this spot for block shots. Um, so just another guy to talk about. I guess I didn't talk about that Detroit game much. Um, but we'll talk about it right now. We got Herb Jones at block shots. Really liking that. Oscar Thompson, uh, at 20, what is it? 19.5 points and rebounds. Again, uh, he hit for us last time and really liking him in this spot again, especially if Duren doesn't play. Uh, but even if Duren does play, he, you know, is getting those rebounds even with he, when he's there, uh, going up against a Pelicans team that actually gives up the most rebounds per game. Um, if we can pull that up really quick. Which is interesting with Valanchunas, with Ingram, with with Zion down there. Um, you'd think, oh, maybe there's a bunch of big bodies, but they're really giving up a whole bunch of rebounds. 60 rebounds per game so far uh, in the young season. Um, again, some injury some injury news might make that a little bit different, um, but I think I see it as a positive. So Oscar Thompson at points rebounds again. I really really like it. And then uh, yeah, I think that's kind of gonna do it for the games. Um, 
but a whole bunch of picks we've gone over. Let's kind of go ahead and make our official pick. Definitely a, a little bit of a longer video, so sorry about that. But let's uh, let's go ahead and start with Herb Jones. He's done it in ten, nine of his last ten games. Kind of just pulled up his page on Outlier. Um, going up against maybe a more inexperienced um, team in Detroit, I think that helps in terms of block shots. He plays aggressive. He's a defender. Um, could potentially be an all-defensive guy this year. And uh, with a whole bunch of injuries potentially on that Pelicans team, he should get a lot of run tonight. So Herb Jones, we're going to start with the .5 block shots. Next up, we'll just go to Oscar Thompson just because we had him on our, on the in our mind fresh. Uh, 19.5 points and rebounds. Again, Duran is questionable in this game. Um, but going up against a team that gives up a whole bunch of rebounds to a great rebounder in Oscar Thompson. Um, as you can see, he's been killing it this year. We've gone to him a lot of times. But he's getting the offensive game going, too. As you can see, he's literally increased every single time. Uh, as you can expect, maybe a rookie getting his feet wet, um, and maybe he's in a groove now. So Oscar Thompson getting a little bit more involved in the offense as well. Uh, really liking this spot for him. Next up, let's go to uh, Pirtle, just because we've been going to him a decent amount. I really, really like his first half play. But with Embiid being such a foul merchant, I do get scared that he'll come into foul trouble in that first half. Um, you know, that's not, you know, doesn't 100% going to happen. But uh, that's why I'm just going to go to his full game here. 18.5 points, rebounds, assists. We talked about Precious Achuya also being out tonight. Um, so that very thin center depth gets even thinner. Uh, so really liking Yaka Pirtle in this spot. Next up, let's go to Maxi. Uh, he's done it in every single game easily. 33.5. I want to say I'm not going to bet against him because the two times I've bet against Embiid, uh, he's hurt me. But I think Embiid, you know, this matchup isn't the best for him um, just because they play very versatile and quick. Uh, even like they're very long, versatile, quick, this Raptors squad. Um, and just the history has him just not playing well against him them at all. I will show Embiid's um, page real quick just to kind of reiterate that. Um, but head to head here, uh, we can see that, you know, a lot of his overs are not going to be hitting. That's first quarter points, um, but 50, 50, so 54% uh, in terms of his points, uh, his assists, one of 13, uh, doesn't really like that. Um, in terms of his rebounds, let's see, 62%, so solid on the rebounds, and then uh, blocks and steals we, is something we went to in the past here, uh, but two of 13 games, he's gone under this as well. So um, I don't really love the Embiid spot, but I'm definitely going to pivot and go maxi just because he's been killing it. So that's what, four picks. Um, I love Tobias Harris in this spot for sure as well, uh, but I think I'm going to go back to Keldon Johnson. We saw what he did against Phoenix last game, uh, scoring 27 points. Uh, definitely knows how to take advantage of that defense. And again, with no Booker, hopefully we have no Booker um, and not a whole lot of uh, you know blowout potential as the Spurs team scraps against uh, an injured uh, Suns teams because there's definitely still no Beal. Uh, but hopefully Booker doesn't play, and let's go to his points and rebounds at 22.5. Uh, definitely a guy that can grab some boards. Looks like his line's at 4.5, um, but had nine back against Dallas, and uh, I think he could get it done against uh, against the Suns, just like he did last time. And then last but not least, I'm going back and forth between Tobias Harris here um, and I guess Schroeder. Like uh, We have so many of these. We talked about Scotty Barnes. Um, Let's go. If I'm gonna fade and be, that's tough. Let's look at him. Let's look at Tobias Harris's page real quick. Um, I do want to see just his matchup with this uh, Toronto team. Let's go to Tobias Harris. I really like his 14.5 points, um, or I guess 16.5 points in rebounds line or points and assists line. Let's see if we can pull that up. Points and assists. I don't even know where it is. Points and rebounds. Oh, here it is. Yeah, minus 120 looks really good on the odds in terms of uh, really plays well against this team, too, um, with no Harden. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Tobias Harris. I don't love, like, people call this a stack, but in terms of my eyes, sometimes I think, like, if I'm taking Maxi's points for assists, why would I take Tobias Harris's um, points and what, assists? But in terms of this one, I just really like his spot here. I think we're getting a discount on his 14.5 points that he has hit every single game. And uh, we talked about his on-off stats without Harden last year. And uh, we can see that he's, I think he averaged like three assists last game, three and a half or something. Um, where is he at? Tobias Harris. Oh, that's averages. Harris. Duh, duh, duh. Where are we at? 
Can't find him now. Tobias Harris, where you at? Here he is. 3.45 or 3.47. Um, so definitely getting more value than his, what, 2.5 line. Um, so I'm liking that spot for him. I think he could definitely get there. Uh, yeah, so that should do it. Definitely the longest video I've put out in a long time. But I hope you guys got like a lot of value out of the uh, just talking over each specific game. Herb Jones at 0.5 block shots. We definitely talked a lot about him, so I won't go too much in him. Potentially no Ingram. Definitely no Zion. Should get the minutes and has gotten it 9 out of 10 games. Oscar Thompson. Potentially no Jalen Dern again, uh, but he's been doing it all year um, and getting more involved in the offense. 19.5 points, point, or sorry, points and rebounds over. Jakob Pertl. Uh, you know, someone that can definitely get this line. Um, looked at his first half stats. Uh, something we'd be interested in as well. Something I'm playing elsewhere. But we're going to his 18.5 points, rebounds, assist line. Again, uh, we've we've played this a few times on this channel, and he's worked out for us. Tyrese Maxey at 33.5 points, rebounds, and assists. Uh, really liking his spot here. He's been killing it, uh, getting this line easily in all four of their games, five, three of their games, whatever they've played so far. Keldon Johnson at 22.5 points and rebounds. He just scored 27 points against this Phoenix team. Um, so kind of hoping no Booker on that one. And then Tobias Harris, 16.5 points and assists. Again, someone that can get there just in the points. Um, but without Harden and uh, with Ubre coming into the starting lineup, um, some potential for extra few assists in there too. So 20 for 500. Let's go ahead and place that together. That will do it for this one. I will try to quickly get out a Thursday night football video for you guys as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I might th fl uh, throw a few hockey plays in there as well uh, if I find some really good positive EV ones on prize picks. Um, but definitely just trying to continue to give you guys as many picks as possible. And uh, hope you guys subscribe if you like this video. And uh, leave the video a like, like always, just so more people can see it and uh, talk about it in the comments down below. But that's going to do it. Let's make some money tonight, guys. Peace out.